welcome to our Post Leaders Debate Show. I'm Jane Tabor. And with me now, again, Paul Waldy, Report on Business Editor. Lindsay Tedds, an Associate Professor of Economics at the University of Victoria, and Globe and Mail columnist and author. John Ibbotson, and together we'll critique, we'll critique the highlights and lowlights of the last 90 minutes. And so let's start with you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Surprises, a big highlight, what, did, what was your takeaway? Well, I'll tell you what, I think that Mulcair clearly won this debate hands down. He had the best arguments, the best retorts, and, and really he answered a really key question. Mm -hmm. Harper's attack on him is the constant attack you get from the Conservatives, and that is that the NDP is nothing but a tax and spend party. Mulcair's response I thought was pretty clever because his response to Harper was, while well, you've been cutting all these taxes and all these corporate taxes and taxes on rich people, we've lost all of these jobs since 2008 and 2009. 400,000 in manufacturing alone, and the economy isn't in such great shape now. So I think he really undercut that consistent conservative message. Right, and that's a, a difference from the previous debate where we saw the Thomas Mulcair trying to... Yeah, he wasn't to smiling. He didn't have that <laughs> creepy smile out of it, which was good. I think maybe he was told to, to drop the <laughs> smile and just get right into it. John, what did you think? Um, I agree. Uh, I thought we have, we have two elections underway. It, it struck me as I was watching this debate tonight. And the first election is, should we elect Stephen Harper? So I wanted to know, is Stephen Harper going to come out swinging? Is he going to try to move the numbers? Right. Is he going to try to make the election about him and his plan? No. He said, you know what? These other guys are having a whole lot of fun duking it out. I'm just going to stand here, make my points. And I think to, to that extent, you know, those who feel good about Stephen Harper will feel good about this debate. I don't know how many people he actually convinced who were, who were doubtful. But then there was this second election campaign. If we are going to replace Stephen Harper with the new prime minister, who should it be? Should it be Tom Mulcair or Justin Trudeau? Mr. Trudeau was very aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. he, you know, he talked over, he interrupted. But a lot of the time, he kept going back to message track. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of the time, you, and, and you know, look, all politicians go to message track. But it shouldn't be obvious. And, and sometimes it looked obvious. And, and I agree with Paul. The, uh, uh, the, the sort of the calm, measured, mm -hmm. prime ministerial tones of Tom Mulcair uh, really carried the day. Well, and let, let's go to our economist, uh, Lindsay Taz, and, and let's hear it. Any white lies? Is there, is there, is there anything? <laughs> how that, many? Yeah, uh, how many white lies? They, were there? there were a significant amount. I was very disappointed to hear Tom Mulcair say that this was the worst recession since the Depression. That's not true. Mm -hmm. This is the worst re recession since the last recession, <laughs> i.e., this is like the best one we've ever had. Uh, so it was disappointing to hear him fall back on, on, on that rhetoric. And then they all use this idea of um, small businesses being the uh, job mm -hmm. creators in the economy. That is not true. Uh, it is not size which matters for job creation. It is age. And there is a significant amount of research, both in Canada and the US, that okay. backs that you're, up. You're talking about jobs. And we've isolated a, a, a highlight, what we thought was a highlight during the debate of, of uh, an exchange between Thomas Mulcair and Stephen Harper on jobs. Listen to this. Mr. Mulcair, you actually are the only leader in Canadian history to have gone to another country, you and your colleagues, to the United States to argue against Canadian jobs and against Canadian development projects. It's exactly the opposite, Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper. It's exactly the opposite, Mr. Trudeau. Hold on, Mr. Trudeau. 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 40,000 Canadian jobs would be exported to the United States with Keystone XL. That's not our figure. That's the government of Canada's figure under Mr. Harper's Conservatives. I want to create those 40,000 jobs in Canada. So that's the kind of passion that we usually see in the House of Commons. And, and, yeah. yes, and, and, we, and we saw it, and it shows that there are 30, 30, 30. It shows what's at stake here because we did see that kind of uh, that kind of aggression. Yeah, I mean, there were two two things going on there. One, obviously, was about the Keystone Pipeline yes. project, and I think Harper used an argument he has used repeatedly against Mulcair that he went down to argue against the Keystone Pipeline. That's mm -hmm. a fair shot, but I right. think the 40,000 job exported thing is a little bit far-fetched, and I think Mulcair came back at him pretty strongly and said, you know, you're the one that's proposing this pipeline, and one of the big arguments that the Republicans have used in the U.S. for the Keystone Pipeline is all the jobs it will create down there. So mm -hmm. I think both of them scored a couple of points there, but uh, so in that case, you know, Mulcair comes into this only having to come out even. I think he came out ahead, so he even wins that one by default. John, yeah, too many think? numbers, way too many numbers, and, and, and voters don't want to try to memorize this or memorize that. What matters is um, Harper, okay. one of the few occasions when Harper actually rounded on uh, Mulcair, yeah. uh, tried to take him down, and uh, Mr. Mulcair came back, he was calm, he was measured, um, and he took the point away from Mr. Harper. Lindsay, Lindsay, do Canadians listen to that? Do they get that? Do they 
understand the, the economics behind it? Well, I don't know. They were all talking over each other. I couldn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> I, you know, uh, I, I'm, as the economist up here, I'm going to have to say, look, the only jobs that government creates are public sector jobs, okay? Mm -hmm. they, the government creates an environment with which private sector can potentially create jobs. So I think we just need to be careful about, you know, who creates jobs and where they go and why they mm -hmm. go uh, and suggest that a government has that much control over it or should take credit for them, I think is laughable. Okay, let's move on to the second highlight or low light, however you guys want to look at it of the night. And we're going to show you a clip of Justin Trudeau attacking the choices Harper, Stephen Harper, has made on the environment and the economy. Listen to this. Wrong. Mr. Harper continues debates, to pretend Trudeau, you that there is a choice that. between environment and economy. Economy. He chooses to say that you cannot build a strong economy if you're still prote if you're protecting the environment, and that has been his failure, and that has been his failure felt right here in Calgary. He talks about being the best friend that Calgary has ever had, that Alberta has ever had, but he hasn't gotten pipelines built. He has made the oil sands an international okay, pariah, and we, with friends we, like Stephen Harper, Alberta doesn't need moment. enemies. Well, you look, you know, I think that was one of Harper, or sorry, that was one of Trudeau's better attacks, yeah. you know, the better criticisms. And I think he did come out more aggressive in this debate. I was pretty critical of him earlier in the first debate mm -hmm. where I thought he was a bit of a, you know, high school performer, but he was not in this one. He was better. But again, I, I think, you know, John made the point that he kind of went back to the same argument over and over. This was one of the few times where he didn't. And I think he did score some points that those pipelines are not being built. Right. And the oil sense does have a real image problem and Harper hasn't helped that. And this is in, in Stephen Harper's backyard exactly. as well, where he's making that point. John? Yeah, we've got to remember there, it is a 30-30-30 election. It has been now for six weeks. There's a very narrow band of available voters, people who might switch between the Conservatives and the Liberals, or between the Liberals and the New Democrats, or even between the New Democrats and the Conservatives. And when, when Justin Trudeau is, is sort of going on like that, I think, actually, that was not a, you're right, that was not a bad exchange. But at other times in the night, it, it sounded as though he was, he was talking scripted points, mm -hmm. and he was saying to those on-the-fence voters, you know, listen to me, I can yell louder than the others, and, um, and, and I can make my point more forcefully than the others. I don't think he was saying, look at me, I'm more naturally prime ministerial than the others. That I don't think he managed to achieve tonight. The economy and, and, and pipelines is... is well, I, I would like to point, pick up on what Justin Trudeau was actually saying, is that you do not have to pick between the economy right. and the environment. And that is, in fact, true. Uh, there are great policies that you can put in place that ensures both uh, the environment and economic growth. And we have to make sure that we think about long-term economic growth and not do too much now and sacrifice economic growth that we can have in the future. Okay. Our third highlight of the night is during the immigration portion of, of the debate, things became very heated when Mr. Mulcair attacked Mr. Harper about his stance on refugees. Here it is. Mr. Harper, why don't you stop using the security excuse as a pretext to do nothing? Mr. Because Mulcair, nobody you, wants to let somebody in without a security check, doing, but you're doing Mr. nothing. Harper, we're, we're announcing that we're bringing in more refugees. We're announcing we're bringing them in more quickly. We're providing a matching fund for humanitarian support because even under the most generous refugee policy, the vast majority of these millions of people will remain in those countries and will need our assistance. Those are the things we're doing. The UN and of course, has asked us to bring in 9,000 refugees before Christmas and you won't do it. They've asked for 46,000 the over are, the next four years. You won't Canadians do it. That's the United it's Nations asking approach, that, Mr. Harper. But it is not the kind of reckless approach that these two parties are asking. Canadians, fear mongering Canadians on the backs of people who Trudeau need help, the most suffering in the more. world. Yeah, yeah, I, I, Boy, that is, that's, that's, he, that's, you know, a, that's I, a heated issue, it's a loaded issue. It, it's tough, and, and I have yeah. some sympathy for Harper because, you know, Canada isn't the only country that is, you know, doing nothing mm -hmm. or has been criticized in this issue. So it's a really difficult issue but for any the, government. It's been a really big issue in the last few days. Oh, he it, it has. He, he should be able to handle himself well. He does, that. but he has to weigh this balance. You know, look at Britain. A lot of countries are going through the exact same type of debate. It's very, very difficult. So it's pretty easy for the other two to attack, but nonetheless, this is a campaign that happens. He's not giving an answer that's really nullifying any of those attacks. And, and Mulcair did the job he has to do to point that out. Well, except that the problem, the real problem is, and there's a lot of polling on this over the last week or so, the voter is him or herself conflicted. The voter wants to bring in more refugees. We all have seen those images in Europe. We all saw that image on the beach. Do you believe we, that? Do you um, believe that yes. Canadians want to bring in more Canadians, ref Canadians refugees? Because you've and heard what Mr. Harper has said about the security issue. And there's plenty of polling data to show that they do want to bring in more refugees. It's but more, right? they yeah. want 
them to be very careful about who they bring right. in and how. And that is why Mr. So, Harper has risen in the polls in the last little while because of the way, of his stance on the security and the refugee issue. But he's never going to win the argument, I'm more compassionate. Well, and, and so that's why you have this split between those uh, like who are saying, yeah, bring, bring more in, but be careful. So the, Mr. Mulcair and Mr. Trudeau are on the bring more in side, and Mr. Harper is on the, yeah, be careful side. Yeah, but Harper only has to, only has to appeal to his base, and he does with his well, argument. Yes. Plus, plus, issue plus 5%. Well, right? yeah, but on this issue, if he can keep his base happy, that's fine. He doesn't need any more on this issue. He needs them on other issues, but not on this one. The other two are going to score points and please their, their uh, base. So I, don't th I think it's a wash all around on this issue. Okay. And, and, and Lindsay, the economy and, and, and immigration. Immigration. I mean, how important is that? It's, it's, a, it's a subject that becomes so political, yet it seems that some, we need immigrants here in this country. I, th there, I think there's two points that I'd like to make. One, when we bring in refugees, it doesn't take them long before they match the employment uh, rates of can domestic Canadians. So I think people who are concerned about refugees coming in here and you know, uh, uh, them being expensive, that's not true. They more than pay for themselves once they get here and get stabilized. But immigration isn't a panacea. It's not going to, um, it's not going to reverse the, the impacts that we're feeling of an aging society. And we need to do more about increasing our population growth. And one thing that none of the politicians have been talking about is fertility policy and the Assisted Human mm. Reproduction Act, which has uh, not survived a court challenge. And there seems to be no discussion about that. And I find that disappointing. Right. Okay. Well, I, we're going we're gonna to leave it there, and I want to thank our panelists. Paul Wallady, of course, is the editor of the Report on Business, and we've got our fact checker here. We're lucky <laughs> to have our economist, Lindsay Tedds from uh, the University of Victoria, and of course, uh, John Ibbotson, uh, the uh, political columnist at The Globe and also the author of a new book on Stephen Harper. So thank, thank you, you that, very Jane. much. So this is the end of our show, but there's so much more in the debate, and you can find all that, video clips, commentary, analysis and stories on globeandmail.com. And I also want to thank our viewers for their keen interest during the Globe and Mail's debate on the economy.